What's going on guys, your boy Fluff here. Today we're covering some commonly asked questions for the Singularity Speed Farm build. This is by far and away the fastest Necro setup and arguably the fastest GR70 setup in the game. And in this video, we're gonna cover everything from toughness to variations to doors, everything. So let's get into it. This brings us to our number one question. How do I open doors? Guys, it's really, really simple. So all you have to do is target the door with your mages. Make sure you target the door. You can't just cast them out here because they won't do anything. We'll, we'll just show you guys. We'll cast them out here, door stays still. But if we target the door, cast the mages, boom. They target the door and break the door. Just to drive it home, again, a door. We target the door, click the mages, they break it. Another question we get all the time is I, I run out of essence with this build non-stop. What do I do when I run out of essence? Assume we have just proc'd. We have no essence pool. We'll just dash a couple times, devour those corpses. We have enough for a new pack of mages. And we'll just keep dashing, run away from the mobs if you can, devour, you got boom, you got enough for two mages. And once you have the four mages up, you're basically ready to keep going. Another key gameplay component that we didn't really touch on in the Singularity Speed Farm build is the fact that we do stagger our cooldowns and what do i mean by that so when we first start out the rift we're gonna cast land the dead get those mages up as fast as we can get your 10 mages out keep walking around keep casting them you got the essence for it why not and once those guys are gone we'll wait until our mages drop to six and then we'll cast simulacrum cast the mages again and since the simulacrum casts double mages for us it'll cast four instead of two we're back at that 10 mark with even more powerful mages than before. Now, why do we stagger the cooldowns? One, so that in the event that you possibly die, there's a good probability that when you respawn, you'll have either Simulacrum or Frozen Lands Land the Dead. Now, why is this beneficial? So, say when you respawn, you only have Simulacrum up. You pop Simulacrum and you'll be at full essence because you just respawned. So, you pop Simulacrum and then boom, you cast four mages. And four mages is exactly what you need to get the full damage bonus from the Rathma six piece, which should be more than enough to get ramped up and get going again. And now, of course, if Land the Dead is up after you respawn, you just won the game, no big deal. Pop that, get your 10 full stack mages out, start going to town again. The other reason I recommend staggering those cooldowns is because when you proc in Yam, you'll be taking down the cooldown of one or the other. So that maintains Kind of a full level of power throughout the rift instead of just blowing them both at the same time um, if you get a bad rift this is a much better formula for maintaining crazy high dps throughout the rift so again guys stagger those cooldowns another key thing that people forget about all the time is the essence generation that your blood rush rune gives you the fact that you can devour this corpse on demand Especially when Ingyam is up, guys. When Ingyam's up, you can port, 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 consume, 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 consume. Get that essence pool up like crazy. We very, very, very rarely ever run out of essence. And if we do run out of essence, it's because we just cast mages and we proc'd at the same time. So that means we have zero essence and we're just proc'd, so we basically have zero mages. That's the only time you're kind of going to suffer in this build. But all you have to do is just port a couple times, you'll get enough essence to cast mages, port a couple more times if you don't have either of your big cooldowns up, doom those corpses, and you'll have four mages up, which means you're at full damage bonus of Wrathmine, and you'll start being able to kill stuff again, you'll start getting enough essence to keep casting mages, get 10 out as fast as you can, even if they're not full power. And you'll really just get the ball rolling again, and it's not a big deal. Now, I will say that 90% of the time when people complain about running out of essence or, you know, saying that the build's garbage, when we ask to inspect their battle net profile, their damage number is really, really, really low. And I can't emphasize enough that just because you're wearing the right pieces and the right slots that you're going to be able to do this build, guys. It is not ready out of the box. You do have to stat prioritize the proper gear stats in every piece it doesn't have to be ancient and you'll see that guys if you go watch the singularity speed farm build guide uh in that video you know we weren't full ancient we didn't have augments and we're flying through gr70 like it's butter but while you can't just put the right pieces in the right slot and it's not a great starter build it's pretty easy to get going pretty early on now if you guys are looking for a great starter build i'd really recommend 
going to check out the Blood Mage. That build is almost ready to go completely out of the box. It's very forgiving on bad rolls on gear. Probably the best starter build for the Necromancer, period. Doesn't rely on Ingyam, doesn't rely on good rifts. You just melt everything and it's very, very easy to play. But nothing's gonna compare to the speed of Singularity Speed. And the last thing that we'll touch on as far as how people run out of essence in this build is the numlock trick. Guys, if you don't know what the numlock trick is, please, please, please go check out my numlock trick video. The thing is overpowered. You will change your Diablo life. You have to be running the numlock trick. Which leads me into the question I get all the time is, Fluff, why not run Devouring Aura instead of Cannibalize? Um, that way you can just basically auto-consume corpses. And guys, it is because of the Numlock trick. You never ever want to run Devouring Aura. It is a bad rune in comparison to all the other runes because once you have the Numlock trick going, you basically get Devouring Aura plus another rune. So it makes Devouring Aura a really, really bad choice. So again, guys, stay away from Devouring Aura. Use the Numlock trick. It's amazing. It is not an exploit. It is not cheating. It is built into the game. Blizzard knows about it, so don't freak out. Now, if you don't have a keyboard with the Numlock, I've heard that using Caps Lock also helps. And if you're on console, uh, a buddy of ours, Phoenix, says that you can just assign it to one of the triggers and hold it down, and it's no big deal. Now, another question I get all the time is, Fluff, I can't get the circle of evil to drop how do i get it to drop it's crazy i spent like a thousand shards i've spent countless mats trying to get this ring and i can't get the drop all you guys have to do is roll a level one necro have a decent amount of blood shards to be able to spend on the level one necro and then just start rolling rings the level one necro will only have two rings in its loot drop pool which is the leoric signet the xp ring and circle of neluge evil now you have this level one circle ring and you're like, well, what the hell am I going to do with this? Guys, you can cube a level one ring and it doesn't matter. You'll get the full power of the legendary effect in the cube. So that means you'll have circle of Neluge Evil unlocked. And, and keep this in mind for basically any season from here on out. This is going to be an amazing trick to get a lot of power early on in the season. Now, of course, one of the big questions we get all the time in this build is Fluff, I am so squishy. Everything one shots me. How can I get more toughness from this build? How are you able to do GR75s on this build without dying? That's crazy. Well guys, a lot of the inherent toughness from this build comes from the sheer amount of damage you're able to do. And I found that that kind of holds true for all Necro builds. The more damage you have, the more tough you become. And again, most of the time when people are complaining about squishiness, they're complaining about running out of essence, and we inspect their battle.net profile, they just don't have enough damage on their sheet to be running this build. Now guys, it doesn't require a lot. I'd say, you know, 800K to a million is probably good enough to start running T12, T13. But if you're expecting to run, you know, GR70 at the speed that we do, fresh out of the box with 500K damage, I'm sorry to inform you that you will die. But Again, we were able to run GR70s no problem um, with just the right rolls in each slot, not even full ancient, with no augments. This build is crazy, guys. And now that we've been running this build for a really, really long time, we've got pretty great gear. We're full ancient. We've got augments on every piece that we really think is a good piece. Now with this higher damage number, obviously speed 70s are a cinch. Uh, I can speed through 75s in two and a half minutes and under. And I really think with more Paragon, higher level Despairs, because these are only level 80 Despairs, that this build could speed through 79s. We also wanted to touch on kind of a few layers of toughness that you can actually add to this build without changing it all that much. One is that you can drop Blood Rush Molting for Blood Rush Potency. This will give you almost double toughness, you can see as I dash. My toughness goes up to 36 instead of 23. And again, with Ingyan up, you're able to spam this so that toughness stays up. You combine this with Esoteric Alteration instead of Band of the Powerful, and you actually become quite tanky, and you don't lose that much speed. So that's kind of like the number one choice if you need just a little bit more toughness without sacrificing too much speed. Now option two is we drop Ring of Royal Grandeur in the cube in favor of Unity. 
We keep the molting on the blood rush so that we consume that corpse. And we just have that inherent toughness of unity going off for us at all times. And again, guys, that won't show on your sheet. Past that, if you need even more toughness, you can again drop Bane of the Powerful for Esoteric Alteration. And that makes this build pretty, pretty tanky especially for T13 GR70. You'd be hard pressed to die with this setup. Now, I will say if you run this setup, now obviously this isn't as fast as the original build that we posted, but a quick caveat, if you die in this setup, you will feel it a lot more than you would in the other setup because you have dropped Sarah Plate, so that corpse generation that you get from just the Blood Rush rune when you have run out of essence is half as good. Now, a lot of people that run this build will also drop final service because you know if you die maybe you don't care about your pools of reflection and you just die uh, and you respawn you come back to life with full essence so those mages will have full power again once you've respawned so a lot of people actually just dropped a di altogether run something like blood is power i've even seen some people run wrath shield because we do have land of dead we do have simulacrum so you know you'll have four second immunity every once in a while which can be really nice for stuff like molten and whatever now, if you need toughness even past that, you can drop Haunted Visions for Wisdom of Kalan, get more toughness from the bone armor that we're always running, and this will make you really, really tanky, guys. If, and if you can't survive past all these levels of mitigation, then you maybe should consider just playing the Blood Mage or playing something like Bone Mancer. Very, very easy build. Very, very tanky. Another question we get all the time is, Fluffy, why aren't you running the Gold Wrap? It's so OP in this setup. And the response to that is a little complicated. So we actually do really, really, really like Gold Wrap in this setup. This is one of the few setups in the game that I actually would recommend running Gold Wrap. Just because the mages kind of kill everything as you're moving, you're constantly picking up gold. There's no like gaps in picking up gold. It's a very, very good Gold Wrap build, guys. And we'll touch on that in a second. But because of how Diablo fans work, I can only show one true variation of the build. And I felt that showing the Gold Rat build, while it's very, very powerful, very, very strong, and we definitely recommend it, to use this only for T13 would be a massive waste of its true potential. This is the fastest, I would argue it's the fastest GR70 clearing speed build in the game. So to use this for only T13, it would be a massive waste. So that's why we've chosen to show this particular setup on our Diablo fans build guide. But, Again, guys, this is a very, very, very strong build to use with Gold Wrap. And for you guys that are complaining about toughness, this is definitely a way to go. And all you have to do to run the Gold Wrap in this build is obviously put Gold Wrap on instead of Vigilant Belt. You have to make up for that cooldown reduction somewhere else if you can. And of course, run Avarice Band with Boon of the Hoarder instead of Ring of Royal Grandeur and wear the full Rathma six-piece bonus. Now, you won't quite get the essence regeneration that you would in the normal build, but you get crazy toughness. You're picking up everything. You don't have to wait for anything at all. You're just flying from pack to pack to pack to trash and just killing, deleting everything on the screen. The essence generation stays up quite a bit. But yes, do run Gold Wrap if you need the gold. Uh, most of the time, I actually don't run Gold Wrap because I just love this setup so much. Plus, we just don't have enough armory spaces for this build because and i don't want to manually swap out all the items every time i want to do normal t13 but it is a very very strong setup especially if you need gold guys another question we get all the time guys is how much attack speed is good you know what are the break points for the skeletal mages how does this all work and we're gonna leave this post in the comment section below guys be sure to check out this post guys if you're playing any necromancer pet build this post is amazing this guy davlock put this crazy amount of information together about how the necromancer pets work and this post is amazing but basically the tldr is all attack speed helps there's no break points for the mages whatsoever any attack speed that you can get is going to be great it's going to up the damage of those skeletal mages so if you can fit attack speed on a piece of gear do it as long as you don't have to sacrifice cooldown reduction crit chance crit damage stuff like that definitely get attack speed and you can even sacrifice some of your crit chance later on with perfect gear to pick up more attack speed that's why we recommend you know if you had gloves that were perfectly rolled we would roll off intelligence to pick up attack speed so that you'd have attack speed crit chance crit damage cooldown reduction the absolute dream rolls and we recommend that on a lot of the pieces to pick up attack speed in favor of intelligence like the side of the cycle if you could do that here too that'd be great also in the comment section below we're going to link this particular d3 planner page which will show you every variation that we run of the singularity speed farm build guys we have the original 
with exactly how we would roll every piece in the perfect world. We have the T13 gold wrap version. We have, you know, the toughness version. We have our 75 plus version that we just posted last week. Very, very good for pushing 75 and above with crazy fast clear times. And we also have a setup that we use for bounties. Um, one of the big questions we do get all the time is what do you run for, for bounties? If I was solo doing bounties, I think Blood Nova is by far the best bounty build. I also really, really like Blood Mage. Blood Mage is really good in a group because it's not reliant on Ingyam whatsoever. But if you do want to run a bounty farm build with um, Ingyam, this is a great setup. Another quick question we get all the time is, how much cooldown do I need for this build? I would say that you need for this build is 45 plus CDR. Now, the more that you can get, the merrier. You can see here on our D3 planners page that if we can get up to 58% cooldown reduction, that would be the dream and not sacrificing too much damage for it. Currently on our character, we want 53.27. But again, if we could get just a little bit more, we would love it. Because the more cooldown you have on this build, the faster you're going to get back Land of the Dead, the faster you're going to get back Simulacrum. And those are the two guys that make this build really juice up. One variation we see all the time in like the T13 setup, where you know we pick up Gold Wrap, we pick up Unity, we pick up Band of Avarice, um, and people like to pick up Aura or Felty, which is actually a good option if you're running in a group, because Aura or Felty's size increases based on your pickup radius. So obviously with Avarice Band, it's going to be like a whole screen worth of pickup radius, which is really cool, especially in groups. But unfortunately, you would need about 84 mobs on the screen to equal the same amount of toughness that you'll get 100% of the time with Simulacrum Reservoir. So again, guys, unless you're grouping, wouldn't recommend dropping a Simulacrum at all. Another mistake we see people were doing all the time is they'll cube Scythe of the Cycle and they'll wear the Ingyam. And I can see why it's so tempting. Like, I'm so tempted to use this Ingyam. This Ingyam is crazy OP. I would love to use this. But there's two problems with using Ingyam in this build, guys. One is that you can't use Dark Reaping if you wear an Ingyam. Because, obviously, Ingyam is a sword. And Dark Reaping requires a Scythe. So you'd have to drop Dark Reaping altogether, which means less Essence Generation, which wouldn't be great. The other reason not to use Ingyam Unfortunately, Ingyam cannot roll maximum essence on its secondary sadness. So I know it can be super tempting to use that Ingyam, but it's just not going to be as good, guys. Now again, guys, if you still have comments past all the ones we've answered in this video, please post them in the comment section below. Most of the time, you can find probably an answer to your question just by reading other people's comments, but we do do our best to reply to the comments as fast as we can. But sometimes it can be almost a full-time job, so we promise we're not ignoring you guys. We get to all the questions that we can. And before you guys post things like, this build sucks, you suck. <laughs> you know, if there's like a thousand people on a forum thread saying, oh my god, Fluff, I love this build, it's crazy, but overpowerful, oh my god, oh my god. And you post, this build sucks, there might be a small chance that you're wrong. Just maybe. Maybe. Just this much a chance. But that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully we've addressed most of the questions you guys have to Singularity Speed Farm build. Again, this is the fastest Necromancer setup there is for T13, GR70, and under. If you're looking for a more lazy play style, you know, check out the Blood Mage build. Check out uh, that one guy's Lazy Mancer setup. Those are all great to just hit the space bar, but obviously this is the fastest, period. And again, I would argue that this is probably the fastest GR70 setup in the game. As always, guys, like, subscribe, come over to Twitch, ask your questions, support us on Patreon. We love you guys. Peace out.